Hey guys, uh, welcome back. For those of you who are hanging in there, this is turning out to be the longest restore I've done, I think. Maybe apart from the Ready Alves, but then that was two sets, so it doesn't count. So, while waiting for the cab and lacquer to dry before I uh, polish it off properly, I thought I'll see about getting this guy ready to go back in. So I've undone the uh, temporary switch setup I put over here in the corner. Uh, and so I start putting all this guy back together. Um, and uh, well, it's turning out to be more fun than I expected. Um, luckily my little tab here, uh, the uh, bolt I glued in, that worked fine. So this little guy worked just fine. Pretty pleased with that. Um, however, what I found was when I put this uh, wire on, it increased the tension on this drum and the whole drum is driven by this mechanism here with the cord uh, and so sure enough when I got to one end again it would slip it wouldn't come back so I put a couple more turns on this spring so we seem to be back in action again um, then I noticed and I never checked this because it's really hard when I took it out even though this wire is under spring tension and it's going over this pulley and this pulley is totally free to move when you move the uh, string it slides over the pulley and doesn't really turn the pulley um, and that bugs me because maybe it worked for years like that but at the end of the day it's just cutting away into the pulley um, and I have a feeling that it should, I don't know, it should just rotate the pulley. That's the purpose of the, that's the purpose of a pulley, right? And it's the same on this side, same on this one. Again, the pulley is completely free to move, but there is insufficient friction on it. Um, maybe it'll all line up properly when I get it into the set and it's all in exactly the right place. But what bugs me about this is um, you just have to take a chance. <laughs> so if I put it all in and it's actually worse, not better, I gotta take it all out again. Um, not looking forward to that. Um, why is the glass missing? Uh, the glass is out because I decided I wanted to have other options. Because <clears throat> now that it's all cleaned up and stuff, and I couldn't clean the glass tile very well. Uh, when you put it back, it, it looks pretty crappy because you can see all the dust in some parts of the dial and not in other parts of the dial. And so what I've done is I've scanned the dial <coughs> and um, tweaked it all up with Photoshop so I have a nice black and white version. And so uh, I heard from one of the guys in one of the forums in the UK and what what he did with a similar type of set was, since his dial was in bad shape, was he literally just made a print and stuck it to the back here. Um, and that works just as well. Um, so that's my plan B. I will put this all back together as original. Um, but if it doesn't work out, I will hack it out again. And I'll, uh, I'll just clean the glass totally so there's no print on it. And I'll stick the... Uh, the station list and everything uh, onto this back panel here. Uh, anyway, that's further down the road. Oh, and uh, I took out the rectifier valve because after watching Buzz's little uh, experience with his last restore, where uh, it got dinged three separate occasions, I thought, Man, since I'm going to have to finagle this monster of a thing into the cab, there's a high likelihood I'm going to do something similar to mine. So. Let's put away until it's all back in the cab safely. So here's the one side of the cab which is pretty much done at this point apart from a bit of final polishing up. Um, and the regime for this after I did the uh, shellac and the lacquer is I initially rubbed it out with 400 grit paper uh, and uh, using a flat solid uh, sanding block, not one of these flexi ones. Uh, the reason being, as probably most of you guys know, 
if you're trying to sand something like this with a flexi block, there is it's almost impossible not to sand through when you get right to the edges. Um, with a fixed with a fixed block and a little bit of care, you're way less likely to uh, go over the edge. Um, so sand it down first with 400, uh, then wet sand to uh, 1200 grit, and then after. Uh, hand polish with some medium grade polishing compound. And the difficulty or ease of doing the rubbing out will depend a lot on the type of sandpaper that you use in my experience so this 3M stuff I found to be the best in the sense that it uh, it does not load up uh, hardly at all um, and, and the only problem is because you can use it so long without it loading up uh, its cutting edge, if you know what I mean, will reduce after a little while so you just have to keep an eye out for that because otherwise it just means you keep working harder and harder and harder for less and less result so remembering to swap change the uh, piece of paper every now and then is definitely a good idea uh, wouldn't use this stuff for wet sanding though, so for wet sanding this is my favorite one, and this one uh, is made in Japan. And uh, as I, you don't need a lot of this stuff in my experience, because in here I've had a couple of little pieces of this stuff, and it's been there a long time, and it's been used on quite a number of projects, and it still cuts just like when it was new, or almost. So this is what it looks like after it's wet sanded from, we're going from the 400 grit up to the 1200 grit. So I just leave that to dry out a little bit, um, although it's pretty dry already. Um, and then get the uh, polishing compound on it. So there we go, rubbed out to uh, with the finishing compound and I think we'll stop right there. Uh, the answer to the question, how long do you rub this? Uh, when do you stop? It's when your arm hurts like crazy and then you keep going a little bit longer. Then you stop. Right, just gonna spray these black stripes, see the side here, and uh, hopefully we'll be almost there. Well, put that back in is going to be more fun because when I took it all apart I had everything removed except the HF section so there's a lot more room to to move here. Right now we're kind of stuck. 
So since uh, I'll be in the camera's way here, uh, I'll just show you quickly what I'm trying to get done. So this mounts on these four uh, bolts here which go into the Bakelite frame. I've got the lower bottom one here just started. Uh, I'm going to try next to get the lower one over here started. Then I can take off this frame and hopefully just tilt the top of it forward and we'll be real close. That is the plan. I'll let you know how it goes. Well it's in there. I got the four bolts uh, screws done up. Uh, I had to take the tube out here just so I could get a long screwdriver to get in there to those guys. Um, and I've put two retaining bolts, one each side here on the uh, subframe. So hopefully the relationship between this chassis and the uh, dial is now fixed. And the next big test will be turn it around, see does it look okay lined up properly. And if it is, can I scan the dial back from side to side without things going be doing. Okay, I have a feeling my dial might be slightly over to the left, that the glass needs to be further this way, vis-a-vis -vis the pointer. Because uh, the uh, tuning cap is at the end. Or I'd just uh, loosen the pointer and move the pointer over on the dial string. Um, However, we'll worry about that way down the road. Yeah, my pointer is definitely uh, about a centimeter or a half inch to the right of where it ought to be. Uh, so it'll all depend on whether there's enough room in the uh, little bracket where it mounts onto the cable that I can move it over. We shall see. But at least it seems I have full travel, nothing screws up or gets blocked. It looks reasonably well lined up in the opening here. So we carry on. We'll fit in the dial light bulbs and the magic eye and all the other bits and bobs before we get going. Well guys, I think that's it all back in. Um, I haven't seen any disasters yet. Um, everything seems to fit. Um, I've put the magic eye in, I've rewired in the um, the dial bulbs, uh, one of which I think at least might well be blown. Um, but I'll try it first, they're relatively easy to uh, replace. I um, don't know if you can see it, but I wired up the main switch, the line fuse. Um, I sort of cheated a bit in that since the hot glue held it so well onto the frame for testing I thought where's the point in you know screwing holes into the side frame so I just use hot glue to hold it on there and I'm pretty sure it ain't gonna go anywhere um yep here we go so on the side I'll put back together cover plate back on um I can see why you need a, an access plate here because the bulk of the servicing of this thing would have to be done through here because taking the chassis out is probably a return to factory job back in the day, right? If you had, I can't imagine your average service tech out in the field or in your average radio shop would have the wherewithal um, to take this thing out of the, of the cab. Right, almost there. Here it is all back together. Um, so this is one set where I do have a back for it and it's in pristine condition and so I feel obligated to use it but the chassis here is so nice if it didn't have a back on it I wouldn't be worried because I think the chassis is really nice to look at. The only thing I'm not sure of is there's two holes here and I'm not sure if there was something over this to hold it in. I don't think there was when I got it um, because if there was for sure I'd have it and I don't and so I'm pretty sure it was just like this and so if there was a cover all over this at some point uh, I think it had vanished before it got to me um, anyway maybe I'll find some photos online not likely though there's not a lot on this one on the, on the web Thank you.
Что такое джаз? Это ритм и чувство. Этому нельзя научить, иначе это будет просто механическим отражением. Claro, ahí ya llega el grito atávico de los suyos. ¿Algún cómico en la sala? Servidor, eh, bueno, hoy... Avant el départ de Hermione para los Estados Unidos, hubo un véritable engouement a Bordeaux, a La Rochelle, a Fourra. ¿Es que vos ressentez la misma ferveur du côté des Américains? Ah, oui, tout à fait. Tout à fait. Euh, D'abord, ils ont ce côté très chaleureux que, que je crois que tout le monde connaît, hein. Euh, qui, euh, qui, qui, qui surprend quand même, euh, même si on le connaît. Et... On dit que vous, vous avez réussi à garder euh, aussi quelque chose, il paraît que vous vivez dans une maison enchantée, c'est un peu le monde de Peter Pan chez vous. Vous faites pas la vie. Ariane Moffat revient avec un nouvel extrait d'un album sorti discrètement au mois de mars au Canada. Elle le présentera sur scène en France à la Gaîté des Rides de Paris le 10 décembre. এরই মাঝে কোনো কোনো শিল্পী ব্যান্ডের গান গিয়ে অসম্ভব জনপ্রিয় হয়ে উঠেছেন Here he appears as a forer minjin awaiting retribution, whose immaculate wardrobe matches his simple, slashing moves. With a face as fair as a modern office worker and adequate acting skills, Chang could pose a serious challenge to Wu Jing's ascension. All right, guys, I think we're going to call this one done. Um, there's all these bits and pieces to do, of course. Um, like I think I gloved something on the top surface, so that probably needs a touch-up. Um, the, dial, the dial pointer is not quite properly aligned. Um, but as I hope you saw there, I mean it is very warm tonight. Shortwave reception is not that brilliant. But this thing is picking up stations all over the place. Uh, some of them so strong they were rather badly distorted. Um, and so yeah, very pleased with the result. I have to find where I'm going to put this one on display now. 
Anyway, thanks for following along, guys. I hope you found at least some of it along the way interesting. It did drag on a bit, but hey, there you go. I'm not sure what's up next. I do have a couple more radios to do, but I might switch and do that little uh, transmitter build project that I was talking about. We shall see. Either way, I need a temperature to get down because we're up around the 37, 38 at the moment, which is over the 100. Uh, so I don't feel much like working too hard <laughs> on anything when it gets this hot. But they say by later on next week it should start to cool down a little bit. So yeah, here's hoping. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.